So welcome everybody um, to the April Clinic. Do we have anybody that's uh, new, hasn't joined us before down here in Tacoma at all? I think I recognize most names here. All right. Um, we'll move on to news and announcements then. Uh, as always, I want to um, make sure I make every everybody aware of the, the, the YouTube channel here. And thanks for Burr's hard work and Byron's hard work. Um, quite a nice library. Now, this screenshot's a little bit old, but uh, wonderful library of online videos, uh, both clinics and layout tours and uh, other, other uh, videos. Um, I'm perusing it all the time and, and uh, actually spend more time than I probably should on it, but it's a great resource. If you've missed any other clinics that uh, have gone on around the region or many of the layout tours, um, they, uh, Byron and Burr and those folks are doing a wonderful job of uh, getting this up online for us. So I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. Um, the National Narrow Gauge Convention is uh, going on here. Uh, in the Tacoma, it's Seattle, Tacoma, technically, but the hotel is actually in Tacoma at the Murano Hotel. Beautiful facility. I was in it for the first time a few weeks ago. I just happened to be downtown. I thought I'd check it out. Um, September 1st and 4th uh, of this fall. Um, and uh, the, the website there uh, is now open and taking reservations. Has been for some time. Um, this is a little blurb that... Uh, was sent to me about it from uh, Greg down in Olympia. Um, you don't have to be a narrow gauge modeler. They wanted to stress that uh, most of the most of the themes and topics will be be in geared towards narrow gauge. But uh, I know the national narrow gauge that we had here, and I think it was two thousand and eight, I believe. Um, I attended that and volunteered at it, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a wealth of information. The uh, the contest room was absolutely fantastic um layout tours were fun I, I don't think there's going to be any op sessions this this time from what i understand but uh other than that it should be a a great event I encourage you to uh get signed up and attend that um the regional convention for pacific northwest region is uh in eugene oregon may 11th through 14th um at the valley river inn uh that's coming up pretty quickly so i encourage you to get registered for that too if you can make it down there um just announced the 4d pnr spring meet and annual meeting will be in everett uh this is basically a reschedule from the 2020 meeting that we had to cancel because of the COVID outbreak um i'm just now now about ready to uh, get the the registration um, i'm working with al Lowe to get the uh, website up it's at 4d springmeet.com um, the registration is not online yet, but will be probably by the end of the weekend. And uh, they're still adding some details on the clinicians and clinics that will be there and the schedule. Um, I think it's $25. Uh, you can register online via PayPal, and that includes your uh, box lunch that uh, we enjoy at the uh, annual meeting. Or you can pay uh, at the door, but you will not be, uh, you won't have a lunch reserved for you. So. <clears throat> So if you want the, want the lunch in the full day, um, get online and register. It should be easy to register. And, and uh, I believe it's from 10 or 9 to 4, I think it is, that Saturday. Um, in, NMRA National, uh, Gateway 2022 in St. Louis, uh, August 7th through 13th. Um, they have online reservation. It looks like it's going to be a great convention. I wish I was able to go. I actually was planning on it, but uh, now with our house being finished right about that time that's out of the question for me unfortunately but um the nationals are always a lot of fun and this one i think is going to be really good there's some you know there's uh ken patterson's uh layout's going to be on tour um eric Bruman's utah belt uh vic smith's uh city's edge layout just some fantastic layouts that'll be on tours and I think uh, if you want to go on some of those tours, and some of them are self-guided and some of them are bus tours, but I think those are kind of filling up quick. So if you are planning on going and want to see some of those layouts, you might want to hurry up and uh, get registered for those. And then you can always check out the 4th Division website for more, more events as they come up in the area. Um, 
Does anybody have a tip of the month they'd like to share? Something that you've uh, may have learned since last time we got together or some neat uh, tip or trick you've learned online or something you discovered yourself? Kevin, I, uh, it's Greg Price. I, Hi, Greg. Um, I destroyed or got rid of or recycled a bunch of uh, ready to run car boxes. And in those car boxes, they have the plastic or uh, windows uh, that you can see the car in. So I peeled out all of those um, acetate sheets and I've got uh, a lifetime of window material <laughs> for my building right now. They work wonderfully for that and they're nice and thin uh, so you don't get any distortion. And uh, as long as they're not scratched up, they're in good shape to use them for that. Oh, great. Hmm. Yeah. It's a good idea. Always, always free stuff is always a good thing. Did anybody did anybody see the, um, I believe it was last month's, and I think I might have mentioned that this was coming up this past meeting we had a month ago. Um, the What's New This Week, the Model Railroad Hobbyist video that Ken Patterson puts out once a month. Um, Mike Buddy on there, who's a uh, also a model railroader, but his real passion is... Uh, 187th vehicles um he had his little clinic on how he uses scotch tape for the windows on his vehicles and i was really curious to see that because that to me that you're just thinking okay what's all going to get stuck to that but he has no problem with it and his technique is actually pretty cool and it works well and and it's, it turns out to be very durable and and uh and looks great so um if you Go online and look at that what's neat that this or i don't think it's called this week what's neat in model railroad anyway it's by the mrh folks that ken patterson puts out and he's got about a 10 15 minute clinic on putting windows in vehicles with scotch tape very good anybody else uh, have anything if not i will go ahead and uh Stop my uh, thing here if I can and get into my, my clinic here. So this is a, uh, this is a clinic that I uh, put together kind of as a, an emergency clinic uh, just because I tried this. Um, the original uh, presenter of this is Luke Talon, uh, Boulder Creek uh, Railroad. He, uh, he uh, has a, a number of just uh, out, outstanding tutorial videos, and he's a great modeler from Australia. And this, I, I take no credit for this uh, technique. I tweaked a little things and, and did this, but uh, it, I, I tried it, and uh, it really worked well, and it was kind of fun to do, so I thought I would share it. Um, this was originally from about, I think it was April of 2018 or 2019 when I did this originally. But... Um, So this technique can be used to make uh, standard chain link fences or security chain link fences. And even, even stuff like if, if you're modeling a tennis court and you want to put the high 10 foot around it or a little baseball field with a backstop or anything like that, this, this same technique could be used to, to build th this, this kind of fence. Hey, Kevin, um, uh, we're not seeing your slides. You're not seeing them right now? No, we're, nope. we're just, we're seeing... Uh, the agenda, the April agenda. Oh, okay. Well, let me let me get out of this then. Uh, I was wondering. Okay, I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to share again. How's that? How are we doing now? That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks for letting me know. I just switched uh, presentations. Evidently, I have to stop share and then. The new one. Anyway, um, this is the slide I was talking about as, as far as you can use it for, um, you know, just yard fencing or, or security fencing, or as I said, the, a backstop on a ball field or, or any type place that you have a chain link. And there's a number of materials. And when you start looking at this, you think, oh, my gosh, but it's it's it, it'll all make sense to you. Um, this is specifically for HO, uh, I think, O-Gage. Uh, very it'd probably be even easier to do uh 
than HO, you just need to probably uh, size up your wire, gauge of your wires a little bit. Otherwise, all the materials would be the same. In scale, um, I haven't tried it. It would probably be a little bit more tedious and intricate. But uh, if you could find maybe just a slightly smaller wire than uh, the uh, 18 gauge galvanized to get it just a little bit more scale, I think the, the Thule fabric that I'm going to use here would probably be a, a good choice for in scale too. Um, it might look a little big, but it, it's fine enough. I think you can get by with it, but I'll leave that up to you if you're an engage engager and want to try it. Um, some wire cutters, uh, some solder, solder flux. Uh, I use the resin core um, and then uh, and the resin core solder. Uh, the, the 18 gauge, or excuse me, the 32 gauge galvanized jewelry wire is kind of hard to find, but Hobby Lobby is a good place to find it. Um, and you get a ton of it. I mean, it, it, it'll probably last you uh, more fence than you'll ever want to make. Um, the, the nylon Thule fabric, you can find it online anywhere, and it comes in all different colors, in, incidentally. Um, gray is an obvious choice in this, in this application. Some, both some thin and, and thick CA glue with an accelerator helps a lot. Uh, and then the gray spray paint is optional if you want to paint it, be, being that the wire is silver or gray and, and so is the Thule fabric. It, you probably wouldn't need to do it, but just to give it a more uniform color, I, I chose to do it. Some mounting putty. Um, you'll see that later. Uh, a, a cordless drill, or you could even use a corded drill. Cordless is, is fine, just a drill. Hobby knife, bench vise, uh, ruler, some small pliers, and some metal files. So the first thing you do is, you, is your 18 gauge wire, you wanna uh, straighten the, the rolled wire. Um, what I did is I put uh, some plastic, I pinched it between some plastic just so it wouldn't uh, smash the wire. A couple of car cards there between my uh, vice grip. And then I just unrolled it and just kind of started tugging on it a little bit. And that does a fairly good job of straightening the wire. And I you know do two or three feet at a time to get it straightened out. And then uh, the vertical both ties will be the vertical post height will, of course, depend upon what kind of fence you're making. Um, obviously, if you've got a uh, fence that you're going to put around a tennis court or something, it's probably going to be a 10-foot um, fence. Uh, regular just chain link fence or, or a yard fence will be shorter. Um, this particular version I'm going to make is going to be the uh, three-strand uh, barbed wire security top fence. Um, so the, the length I chose to, to do this was, uh, was about um, four centimeters. Um, and I did both the horizontal and vertical pieces at four centimeters. And you, this is where you wanna be as accurate as possible when you're cutting these. And that's how I did it. I just clamped, a, a, I clamped the ruler and a, a piece of wood there that I could get my uh, wire cutters underneath and very carefully just measured out four centimeters and, and snipped them off and made just a, a ton of them. And then uh, every fifth or so vertical column, you can just separate these, I made about a, a 1.5 centimeters longer. And the simple reason for that is you use that to mount the fence on your, on your scenery base. So everything will be nice and square except for every fifth or sixth uh, vertical fence posts, you make a little longer and then you can just drill some holes carefully and slide it right into the scenery. It works really well. And then to, to clean up any rough ends and help with getting a nice clean butts uh, when we come to the soldering, I just use a little metal file and just just a few little rubs on there and it'll it'll take it right off and make them you know pretty flush and square at the end. And then uh, this is kind of key, even though you're, you're making them um, as close to accurate as you can, as close to four centimeters as you can. I paired them off um, just to get each section, you know, as square as possible. And you'll see this when you start to lay it out. Um, Cause you don't want, you know, you don't want your fence getting, I mean, if it, you're modeling a beat up fence, it probably wouldn't, you know, everybody's seen these chain link fence that have been around forever and they, they're wavy and busted up and bent up and pieces missing, but, um, to get it nice and square, uh, just pair the pair the the, the uh, wires up. Just find two that are as close as possible, and if you've done a real good job, it'll be real easy. Um, and then with the security fence, of course, you have the 
angled top, which you're going to want to uh, attach your barbed wire to. So I just bent that at an angle I thought was appropriate. I, I didn't have any, didn't do any research on exactly the angle, but just uh, bent at the top and then and went along and did all the all the vertical sections with the same 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 amount of bend and angle on there, matched them up as close as I could. Accuracy is, you know, kind of important to make it look good, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I used a piece of shelving, uh, just white shelving, and, uh, and, and drew parallel lines as a template for the fence. And of course, I did them four centimeters apart, very carefully drafted it out there. And this, this helps keep the fence, of course, straight. And you'll see this has been used several times. It's, it's got some, some marks on there. You see where I've soldered and and then you just lay, basically lay your pieces out on those uh, on those marks, uh, and then you use the um, the mounting putty, just a little pinch, and you just you know work it on there. It's a little bit tedious, but you get it all in in, uh, in place and hold it on there with your mounting putty, being as square and as accurate as you can. And uh, the longer the fence. The, the heart of this is, I mean, a, a technique might be to do, I've done several sections of four or five sections and then completed building that and then went along and, and soldered them together after that. And then apply to fuck each joint and then carefully solder and try not to get too large a glob on each joint um, to uh, eliminate the filing and stuff that you'll have to do on the last step but uh it goes actually pretty quickly uh just a little bit of, of your flux on there and just go along and just tap and and it, it you move right along pretty quickly and then when you're done uh you've got a piece that looks like this and then you can use your little metal files to clean up any solder that's you know unsightly on the joints um and uh, you, you do want to be kind of careful here because you can break the joints. But even if you do, you just lay it right back down, touch your soldering iron on it. And it'll, it'll, you know, easily just break that, put that seam right back together just by reheating the joint. And then uh, comes to the, 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 the Thule. Um, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with this. It's been around. I don't know if it's pronounced Thule or Tool or, or what it is, but it's kind of like a, a, they used it for bridal fabrics and you know the lace that type of thing and and uh it's actually very inexpensive you can get it online or even at fabric stores i don't know how big this roll is but it's it's huge um and then you just basically measure your fence height of four centimeters and i did it a little bit bigger than that just to make it easier and then just trim it along the uh the top and what you want to do is you want to get the the peak you want to trim at a peak uh of the uh of the diamond um for each you know to make it straight you don't want to have your fence maybe unprototypical if you just cut it in any which way and have you know the, the sliced you want to make sure that you're you're parallel and perpendicular to your fence so it's very important to get the the uh top of the diamonds just line it up put your ruler down and, and slice and a, a really good sharp exacto knife um helps here and then I just take some CA, a uh, very small amount, and dab it on in a few places, mainly just across the top. And then I use a, a toothpick just to kind of spread it out so it's not, so you don't really have any globs. And I did it on the top part of the fence. And then you just take your toolie and you very carefully uh, put it on, on the board and then just lightly touch your your top rail of the fence there on the top of the tool fabric and uh you only get one shot at it so you want to be as accurate as possible and that's why i like to do shorter sections instead of trying to do you know one big huge section um i've tr i've tried it and it 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 can work but uh it, it's it's kind of difficult i mean you have to be another another thing that i've done too is i've taken a little just a little bit of scotch tape on each end of the tool fabric to keep it from from moving around on you when you're trying to do this i usually start in like in this instance the top the the bottom left hand you see there i'm tapping it down there and then lining it up and then kind of just dropping the top on and the fact that you've only got you've only got the glue at the top um you're much less likely to glob it on there and and, and make a mistake then because if you touch this it, it ruins the tool because otherwise you'll have 
that CA, which will fill in any of those little diamonds very easily just by uh, um, capillary action will just fill in those, those diamonds and, and, can, and make, have unsightly places in your fence. And then after that, is is done i apply the cement uh, uh carefully around the uh just a, in in places um this is actually not how i do it anymore I, I i put it on a little toothpick and i just slight i just dab it on very lightly in the corner it's too hard um doing it right out of the bottle to not to get a big glob that would end up as an insight an unsightly uh glob on your finished fence and then i turned it over and then just to weigh it down while it's drying, I use these little nuts. Uh, just put them along there to, uh, just to just to keep it down until the glue was dry. And you can use some accelerant on there if you want. Um, just be sure that you don't have any glue on the backside and, and glue your fence to your board um, or whatever you're working on. And uh, after, after it dries, I'll take it off and I'll look. And if I have any little loose spots, I can apply a little bit more glue and just weight it down or hit it with accelerant. I tried an alternate method of using spray adhesive on the fence, but once again, it's it's one of these things that if you start to lay it down and you miss or you're off, you're kind of sunk. You because you try, that that tool is not going to come off even off this stuff. You'll you'll tear it, you'll bend it, you'll you'll uh, you know fold it over. So I, I tried this, and I actually like the CA better. Um, Plus, you have to, you know, you have to kind of mask off the areas that you, you don't want the, the cement on, like the top of the security fence. Uh, you don't want a bunch of glue on there that'll become sticky and, and collect dust or whatever later. And then once you got the tool down, it's dry. You can take your X-Acto knife and just trim, just trim uh, the bottom half off or whatever uh, side that, you, you know, you want to trim it off to, to make it fit the bottom rail and the ends. Now to make the, the barbed wire, uh, of course it's not scale barbed wire, but the effect is, is pretty good, I think. The 32 gauge jewelry wire, take a section and double it over. And I usually take about, I don't know, six feet, double it over to make a three foot length. Uh, and then I put the ends uh, in the bench vise, like, just like I did when I straightened the heavier wire. And the other end, I just took a little hanger hook that you'd screw into like hang a little plant or a, uh, a cup hook or something like that and I put it into the chuck of the power drill and then the looped end you put around the uh, the uh, the hook and then you start turn your drill on do it kind of slowly so you can watch it because you can break it if you twist it too tight and you just twist it until you get uh, to you get the, the the twist in there and it, it gives a nice effect of course it's not actually barbed but the effect actually turns out to be pretty good and then you, and then it, it actually gets uh, pretty stiff too when you do that. And then you just uh, cut your pieces, and then the tedious work of gluing those on with your CA uh, onto the onto the top of the security fence to simulate your barbed wire. Um, this is where I usually like to use my CA. I'll just put a spot on, hit it at a certain, uh, and I kind of just do this by eye. I don't measure it. I try to measure it out on that small little angled piece. I just started with the one closest to the actual fence and just kind of eyeballed it up there and just put a little spot of glue, hit it CA. And, you know, typically these fences have three courses of it. Start at the, at the lower course and go to the top. And then that's kind of what you end up, end up with if, when you're done. And then you'll notice I'm holding it by one of the longer sections that will be used to mount it. Um, and as I said, I like to work from the bottom up. It seems to be easier that way and to get the even spacing. Um, it's hard to get it perfect, but unless it's brand new, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, chain link fences are, unless they're brand new, they're, they're beat up. They get, you know, you get little bends and dents in it. So it, it, it's a pretty good effect. If you want to do the razor wire version, you can take a small brush or a pencil or depending on the scale you want um, and just kind of wrap it around. Just take it and start twisting around there and it, it'll hold its shape. And then uh, you can cement the razor wire to, uh, to the supports of the fence. And usually they have the barbed wire that goes through it. As you see on this little picture up here, uh, the razor wire usually goes on the top of it. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a 
blurry picture. I'm sorry. And 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 the and the the razor wire here, I think, is oversized. If I did it again, it would be a smaller, a smaller loop. Um, looks to be a little oversized, but simulates that pretty well. And then if you don't, you know, you wouldn't have to like. like I mean, it looks gray. It looks you know roughly the color of a chain link fence. You can take and and use some um, spray paint to um, maybe hide the little bits of shiny solder or a little you know a little bit of the, the ca glue which sticks out a little bit because of the color and then for decorative fences like you'd find around yards you can use the black or green paint to paint it um and then with the longer post it's simple as drilling a few holes you know just accurately in your scenery and uh and then of course you want your holes to be um nice and plumb nice and perpendicular straight um, just, uh, drill the holes and mount it right in there. It's, 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 uh, pretty simple as that. Um, and now that we know how to do that, we could make other types of fences like barbed wire fences with either wooden posts or, or, uh, wooden, uh, pieces of tree like you'll see out in, in the woods or even metal posts here. If you wanted to go to that kind of detail, maybe get some, you know, plastic struck little channels iron or something like that and do the same thing um for my barbed wire fence i just took wooden toothpicks and uh cut them all to approximately the same length in my little miter box there and then i just kind of roughed it up with the edge of a razor saw to, to give it a little bit of texture and then weathered it and uh i kind of wanted to try it you know uh making the barbed wire look rusted because any barbed wire that you've seen out there that's been out outdoors for any length of time is going to get rusted and I tried using acrylic paint on a cosmetic sponge and then just kind of pinch the wet sponge around the wire and drug it strand through and initially it worked pretty well but after handling the wire and and during the install much of the paint came off so acrylic definitely wasn't the way to go I I don't know if probably uh maybe some kind of primer that was made for metal and then uh, and, and spray painting it or something might, might, work, might work better I don't I don't know i I didn't really follow up on it. Uh, I just did this barbed wire to see if it could be done. I haven't actually modeled it for my layout or anything like that yet. And then I used the end of the strand, which the, the little loop was on, uh, provided a great way to attach the end of the wire to one end of the fence. And then you just loop it and then see it placed on down the line. And it gives you a you know decent looking barbed wire fence when you're all done. Um, just using your CA and your accelerant, just zap 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 all the way down and uh in this case i i actually mounted the the poles uh in the ground first uh then and as opposed to trying to keep them square and, and do the ca afterwards and then put the wire on after the poles were glued into the ground and that's about it for that technique uh, um is there any questions about it or anything anybody else would like to add or I have a comment. Sure. There's a, a tea bag company that has uh, the bag that holds the tea is looks like uh, uh, chain lake fence. It <laughs> comes uh, without making tea, it comes kind of a shiny aluminum color. But if you make tea and take the tea bag out, throw away the wet tea, uh, it makes a rust color out of the Tea bag, huh? And have you tried using laying your uh, thing down on double back tape and then putting your uh, chain link on it? Um, putting your putting frame. what down the double the, the fence itself after it's soldered? Yeah, uh, lay it down on a double back tape and then put your uh, the fabric over that uh, or the fabric over that. I, and if I, you I, just touch it lightly, it'll come off. If you touch it too hard, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I haven't tried that, actually. I haven't tried that. Um, I, 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 The very first time I tried it, I tried putting the CA glue all the way around each the, the whole frame of the fence. And then just I had the Thule fabric on each side, and I tried the, to get that to line up. And after about two or three th tries, uh, that wasn't working for me anyway so that's why i decided to do just the top rail and then just and then put the the tule down on it and uh, uh it's such a fine material that i'm not sure double tape would 
would I, I don't know. It's a good question. I have to try. I mean, I'd probably rip. It, yeah, it's it's a very fine. Um, I think I actually you don't have. touch it very hard. You put your frame down on a double back tape, and then you put your tule over that and just sort of touch it. But right, I, I thought I had maybe a. I don't know where it's at right now. I've got such a mess and everything's in boxes, but you, um, you can get a Joann's and it comes in gray and everything. To, they call it wedding veil. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was originally made for. But uh, and then it comes kind of in a brown, which looks really would make good rusty color. Mm -hmm. My my only question is is what do you do if you're making curves? <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know. I, do they do they do they have curved chain link or do you just? I, I guess. It, well, yeah. If you want to go around, you know, fences going around a curve. I, right, right. Of course, uh, the horizontal posts would be straight, but it still would have to be. Slightly. I guess what you have to do in that situation is, uh, you know, do do one one square of fence, and then uh, or two squares of fence, and then just put something under. You know, to prop it up to the you know the, the angle you wanted before you soldered the next piece on there or something. I, I don't I don't know. That's a good question. I yeah. haven't thought about that. The other thing you could probably do is if you just took your top and bottom rail and bent it um, sectional, uh, you know, as a pattern around where you're going to do, it, and then then just solder your um, your verticals to that. Right, right. So um, you already have a pre-bend. Are you guys talking vertical curves or horizontal curves? Horizontal, horizontal. curves, like if you're if you're, if, well, yeah, you could have if you needed a, if you needed a train too. If your train was not even, yeah, yeah I, 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 I've used Kevin. I, I really appreciate this because I've used the Walters chain link fence kits uh-huh and they're plastic right with metal the the posts are plastic but the uh cross pieces are metal right and, and it only takes a little hit on it and it just destroys it yeah but yeah the idea the idea of soldering your um grid with the, the with the verticals and the horizontals makes so much more sense especially if it's in an area where it might come in contact with an unsuspecting wrist or finger yeah yeah it, it, these are a lot more durable i i agree with you on that um al although i i have matter of fact i have uh damaged i have a little piece of one right here as a matter of fact this is a i don't know if you can see this here but this is a this is a one that this is uh You're going to have to that, quit share and see it. Yeah. Oh, I'll to quit share. Okay, I'll do that. I don't you need can to. see it. There you okay. Go. So now put here, it up there. Here's a, a, a piece without the the angled top on it. Um these are really easy to do because you don't have to bend anything. But um and then it it works really well. I had a piece here that, that I looks really I, cool. Yeah, it, really it, it does nice. work pretty well. Like I said, I don't know other other scales. I, I imagine O scale would be, you know, just as easy or simpler to do maybe because it's not so small. In scale, I don't know. I mean, that, that Thule fabric is pretty pretty fine, so it, it might still look good for in scale. I don't know. Does, does Walters make the in scale fence? Um, not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. But uh, I think the, oh, one yeah, thing I I think the to, wedding veil is really more HO. It'd be yeah, it probably large. is. Yeah. Probably is. One thing I I didn't mention on the presentation, but I I remember the first one I did. I I, I kind of messed up. Is you can see the bottom. I left the vertical members just a little bit lower than the bottom rail, so it looks also when you mount it like they're you know into the ground. Otherwise, this bottom this this bottom. It, it 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 looks funny. The bottom rail usually on a chain link fence isn't touching the ground. It's usually a little bit up off the ground. Um, and so I did I did that the second time I made it. You can see the little little mm -hmm. stubs at the bottom, and that just improved the look on it a little bit. Um, the other thing uh, that that I hadn't thought of 
that Scott brought up curved wise is how you do fences on slopes on hills you know you'd probably have to uh measure your slope and then adjust your angle you know make a jig or something to, yeah yeah uh, so actually. that would that would be another challenge to, to try to figure out but um if you just got a flat spot this is just you know pretty easy and it goes actually pretty fast it looks it looks like it takes forever but it really doesn't um i made on my old layout i had a about i don't know probably three feet by a foot that went around this industrial complex on my up uh, uh, and it uh it probably took me i don't know a couple of evenings to make all that it was actually pretty quick i posted uh a whoop to my own yeah i'm on mute i posted uh, on the chat an alternate method uh there's a a group I've been, or a guy I've been following, he calls himself Boomer. Uh huh. And he's done the chain link fence. Part of it's the same way you just covered, except he doesn't use the wire. He uses styrene to, uh, tubes to make it from. Oh, okay. It's inter interesting approach. Uh huh. Yeah. I, the one reason I do like the wire is that, like I said, like, and, and uh, uh, Greg mentioned it, it is a little bit more durable. You know, if you happen to snag it and you uh, and the, the soldering comes apart, you know, you can just resolder it. Um, although I have when I was trying to move my layout, when I tore it down, I did snag a piece of the I had a piece with the razor wire on it and it didn't really hurt my feelings because I mentioned when I when I did the little the razor wire, the, the, the curl of it, it was a little bit oversized, I think, for for HO. I, I would have made it smaller if I do it again. Um, but I, I, I caught that with a sleeve and it ripped it up pretty good. So it's, it's not indestructible by any means, but compared to the Walther's, that fine plastic, I've, I've, I, as Greg mentioned, I've, I've ruined that before too. So. Yep. I've um, seen plenty of those Walther's kits get destroyed. Yeah. But, um, the, uh, the thing that I've done is, do you guys know what uh, hardware cloth is? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff they make, uh, they make rabbit cages out of. And uh, it comes, you know, in with a uh, mesh that's about a half inch square. And uh, what I will do is I go in there and I'll cut out uh, basically the center to make it uh, an inch square. Um, after mm -hmm. cutting off, you know, a section of it that's probably about, you know, an inch and a half, maybe wide. And I'll go through and I'll and I'll take my Dremel and it's a lot of work. And I'll take my Dremel and I'll and I'll Dremel off all the little extra pieces of it to grind those down. And then I make uh, then I just stick the tool to that. Hmm. That um, would actually be probably be very durable, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's That's hard not to a bad get idea. Out to solder it. Yeah, you don't have to solder it. it right. It, uh, right. And that's, that's what I use on my on the 4D modules that I that I take to shows. That's my fencing on that. Yeah. And, I, uh, I use that's a good idea. That's a I good use idea. Quarter inch uh, hardware cloth and make railings out of it. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I, really I've well done that for railings. Yeah. 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 That's a good I, idea, though. I hadn't thought of that. I just went outside and looked at the slope of the chain link fence in the neighbor's yard. All the posts are vertical. Right. And as you go down the hill, your top bar goes down to meet the top of your vertical post. Mm -hmm. And then your uh, wire goes down as normal. You'd have to cut it to fit it, to go yeah. down the slope. Well, I, when I originally did it, I, 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 I'll i share again really quick again. Um, when I originally did it, I, I thought, well, why am I doing all these pieces individually? Why don't I, uh, why don't I, uh, you know, just solder the vertical pieces on the side of the, of the horizontal runs? But you'll notice on a real chain link fence, they actually kind of have a loop here at the top. It goes through. It doesn't, it's not on the outside or the inside of the, of the vertical piece. It's, it's on the top. Um, so, that it, it it just it just didn't kind of look right and plus it, you can't get the tool fabric you know nice and flush on there you have that that gap where it, you know it just, it just didn't look right so that's 
that's why I stuck with uh, another some other examples here. But um, see, they all go through a little loop at the top, a little hole at the top. And a mm -hmm. lot of them, if it's not a security fence, don't even have the bottom rail, which simplifies mm -hmm. it. The only trick there then is trying to get the solder, you know, perfectly vertical. Use a little jig or something, probably how you'd want to do that. The, and then Another. gates, I, I haven't actually tried doing a gate, but it, 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 you know, it looks like it'd be pretty simple. You just add the extra thing in there and, and uh, maybe a, some kind of little round piece for a wheel or something on the bottom of it. But Another anyway. thought for a little added realism, particularly in S or O, is um, at each of the fence posts, about a 12-inch diameter little gray pad for the concrete footing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, H O or N, you probably wouldn't see it, but by the larger scales, you definitely would. Sure, sure. I imagine that they that most of those are sunk in concrete for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they would be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, but I encourage you, if you really want a real good video on how to do it, go to that Luke Towns. Um, just look, search for him on YouTube. Um, that's where I got this idea from. Uh he, he outstanding his videos are fun to watch too an outstanding modeler he has a whole bunch of different videos on on different techniques in there and i um, encourage you to check that out but that's where this this technique came from i can't take credit for coming up with it for sure